Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ask the CEO with Avraham Gatile. Today, I'd like to introduce a very special guest. He's the Senior Product Manager with Veritas. It is my pleasure to welcome Cliff Barcliffe. Welcome, Cliff. Hey, Avraham. How are you doing, sir? Great to have you on board. Yes, yeah, it's going to be fun. I've been looking forward to this conversation all week. <laughs> Same here. So, Cliff, uh, Veritas is an industry leader in multi-cloud data management, and they just announced a new Veritas Alta cloud platform. Can you go a little bit into detail what Alta is and what does it mean for Veritas and its clients moving forward? Sure. So uh, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, think about customers uh, over time, right? Cloud is, isn't new anymore. And we've been helping our customers, you know, since the early adopters to now today with you know, everybody having a pretty much a cloud first strategy, at least some part of the enterprise doing cloud first. And we have done so many modifications and created so much intellectual property for our products, uh, also some acquisitions along the way that it was time to rebrand those products for when they're used in the public clouds. They said they're, they're, they're different enough they provide what our customers are asking us to do, and you know whether it's um, how it's deployed, you know how it's consumed, um, the you know the capabilities, the use of native services, um, you know within the public clouds. So these are our products deployed and consumed the way our customers want. And, you know, it's so true that businesses of all shapes and sizes are moving to the cloud from small business, which kind of kicked off this cloud uh, migration all the way up to enterprises. What challenges are you finding with businesses um, moving to the cloud? Sure. Uh, again, if you think about the adoption tail for virtualization. Right, the tail, it went for early adopters, but the long tail to get everybody aboard, I mean, it took over a decade. Yeah. Some people say 15 years before everybody was virtualized. Well, cloud wasn't that way, right? There was that sharp early adopter thing. And then very, very quickly after the early adopter, as soon as you had your first financial, as soon as you had your first healthcare system, your first government agency, once you had the first of each of those, everybody else piled on. So um, much qu quicker adoption than I would say previous types of technologies. And you know, the, when those early adopters, they were the people in the corner, right? They were their own little people. They did their own thing. They even had different managers. They didn't use any of the tools. They didn't use any of the policies and procedures, right? And desktop procedures and controls that the rest of the enterprise were using because they were told, look, this is new. We don't wanna, we don't want to corrupt it with anything old. Do your thing and get it going. And so they did. And all of a sudden, there are some really heavy mission critical apps in the public cloud. And now today, um, we, we call it the technical debt. It's the technical debt of what these early adopters did. They were super creative to getting you know these mission critical, wonderful cloud native apps out there. It's now time to make them more enterprise. So it's the control, right? The um, compliance, the resiliency, the ability to um, you know uh, know that it's protected and to actually, in fact, recover it, because everybody's now been through rounds of mistakes. Right, it takes, all it takes is one bad script uh, when you're configuring something in your virtual private data center, and you, you've you've wiped out a whole bunch of configs. So um, people have, you know, have now gone through rounds. Okay, what does it take to recover now? Right, it's not just implementation; it's now the full spectrum of the life of an app. So that to me, it's that um, resiliency, that enterpriseness, that is probably the single biggest problem or not problem, a challenge for our customers because they still want to do things a new way, but yeah. they got to bring in the controls and the capabilities from an enterprise standpoint around those deployments. Yeah, I love what you say about the enterpriseness uh, as a term. As an early adopter of cloud, I took to that, you know, as a technical consultant, it enabled me to be more mobile and I was able to get going really fast. And I think a lot of us that were in a similar situation or a similar space were able to get up, up and running really fast. But now when it comes to enterprise, there's a lot more that goes into play, you know, like talk about ransomware and resiliency. 
We've got a lot of employees, a lot of people working at the enterprise. So there are many more vulnerability points when it comes to things like social engineering. There are compliance because we have clients that, you know, different regions have different laws like GDPR. Mm -hmm. So I could imagine that when it comes to enterprise, there are a lot of headaches that they need to deal with in order to get their environment uh, up to compliance. When solving these challenges, what does great look like? Sure. Well, you mentioned compliance. Um, and that goes with sprawl. Like you mentioned, people are in different regions around the world. Some of the larger co companies, right, are in multiple regions because that's where their customers are, right? They're pushing, you know, there's all these new great edge services where you can push things out close to where your consumers are, which means you can have data literally in seconds all over the world. So there's the sprawl factor. So being able to find out where everything is. Um, we, we find that most people are, you know, those, those early adopters start consuming these great native tools and they're great when it's your app and you're deploying it, you own it. But not when you've got hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of apps. And it's not just you, but it's people across your enterprise that need to own it, manage it, recover it, find out what's going on. So some things that help uh, our customers bring that enterprises, and I call you know what, what, what the great enterprise resilience looks like. So one of the things is visibility. So knowing what you don't know. Knowing what you don't know is probably the number one risk that um, any customer has, right? If you know about it, you probably plan <laughs> for contingencies. But if you don't know about it, that and, and, and the ransomware person comes along and steals it or locks it down, wow, right? Huge headaches all of a sudden. So having some type of uh, controls, um, capability services that can look from the outside in, you know, we, uh, we call it insights, but just visibility, finding out what you don't know, I think is one of the capabilities of uh, an enterprise in a multi-cloud world. Um, the second one you mentioned earlier about, you know, ransomware and recoverability. Um, native tools, like everybody uses snapshots. Snapshots, you know, all the native all the native data creators, the native creator, if you want to say something, it shoves it into object storage and it's great, right? You oh. tell it, yeah, keep a copy of it and it puts it somewhere. Usually it puts it into an object storage bucket somewhere and that's great. But um, if you've been around a long time, you know that snapshots don't equal data protection, right? Uh, I tell people, if you can't um, index it, um, if you can't automate it, and you can't on demand have anybody recover it, then it's not, it's not a backup. It's a copy of data, which is great. It's good for when you're doing an installation and, and uh, you yeah, can go it, we can revert back. Exactly. But in the times of trouble, you need somebody who's going to find out what 1,005 snapshots out there are the right 1,005 snapshots that brings my whatever my complicated app back together again. And you don't want so, to go too far back in time either, because then you lose right. all that data. See, so right. So, and then, so that whole idea of point in time, um, RTOs and RPOs, are just as important in public clouds. And, and in fact, I'd say more so because of the sprawl and the, the variety of services that um, being have, having a good idea. So like I said, that snapshots, one of the things that you want to have indexed and recorded is that point in time and how it relates to other snapshots of point in time that make your app the blinking cursor, right? To make the blinking cursor actually blink again. So, uh, so again, so some you need some way of indexing all of your data that's out there and be able to coordinate the recovery. And not just in the time of ransomware recovery, but auditors want to know, right? You have also maybe the opportunity to maybe want to, to move to different places. So you're able to get move the data from, say, on-prem to cloud, cloud back to on-prem, you want to repatriate. Or if you want to, you know, some of your executives play golf with a with a new cloud provider, and they decide to use a new cloud provider next year. So you have to be able to um, get the data to the next place. So again, having a having tools, policies, and procedures that are independent of your provider, so that you can do all the things that you'd expect back when you had the stuff on prem. And right. then of course you mentioned compliance too. So compliance. 
uh, again, that comes down to discovery and visibility. Um, compliance is right behind ransomware resiliency, and I think from a headache standpoint, it is just too easy, uh, especially um, in, in Europe. And actually, I can't just say that anymore because you've got California and you got Massachusetts here in the U.S. with all kinds of privacy laws. You know, you have the, the executive orders that are out there around privacy and recoverability. Um, you know, Turkey, Australia, Russia, they've all have their own paradigms around privacy and resiliency. So, it, you know, no matter where you are in the world, you need uh, that compliance capabilities. And again, knowing where everything is uh, and knowing that you are complying in your region or part of the world, uh, again, a big headache. Great. Now, what are some examples of how Veritas help businesses with enterprise resiliency in their multi-cloud environment? Okay. Well, I'll just uh, I want to go back to a really early one. One was a financial that um, was migrating, um, and they, they, they're very f- forward-thinking. One, they were one of the first big financials in AWS, and um, they're a regular speaker there every, every, at every uh, reinvent, like coming up. You know, they'll probably be there uh, in what a week and a half from now. And they wanted to get this app, but one part of the app was just a database that they wanted to maintain this part of it using native services, but the staple bit, they wanted to just lift and shift, but they needed the control and the availability. So they wanted availability across AZs. So we gave them the ability to, um, under the covers without changing their app, be able to use multiple AZs as to provide storage so that so that within uh, you know data center, they didn't have to worry about uh, an availability zone problem as a single point of failure. Then they also want to control wide area across their DR. So they wanted absolute control like they had on-prem. That was an early adopter. Today, it's things like, um, we well, mentioned snapshots. Well, you know, snapshots are great and the snapshots do you know, only record differences, but we you know what's the great word about on-prem? It's deduplication, right? That's where you really save because the proliferation of you know dev environments and prod environments and you know it's a point and a click and a script to replicate an entire production environment to do something else with it. Well, even if you just snap showing differences, you still have copies of things. So we've helped several customers with their storage deduplicate all of that storage from all of their copies. So immediate huge savings. As you know, in the cloud, you're paying you know by the month for every terabyte that you're storing you're paying for it and it doesn't go away unless you delete it. So, uh, you know, the bill keeps coming. So uh, and it's, it's, it's one of the, um, I would say one of the glaring lines in the financial picture on cost in the public cloud is all that storage. So it, we instantly save customers money. And then of course, uh, discovery has been a big deal. So customers, uh, we had a healthcare company who, um, because they used um, our cloud versions of our discovery tools, we're able to um, you know, very quickly respond, right, to the privacy and healthcare regulators. Uh, so before it was a big manual process. Uh, now it's um, it's something where when they need the report, it's just a point and a click, and you know it's now somebody else's problem. So um, I used to walk around with a sign that says "I sell weekends," and I love selling customers weekends, right? We, you know, customers need to write that enterprises means automation, right? It means doing things the smart way. And so um, every time we can make it easy, we can make a point and click for our customers. That's a savings for everybody. I would love a t-shirt like that. <laughs> it's fun. I, it, it, and it's, it's my personal belief in technology. Right? Technology is there is to better your life. I mean, yeah, it's there for the business. But yeah. to me, if it doesn't make my job better, faster, stronger, easier, then you know, I personally believe we shouldn't do it, right? Do something else. So, um, so the reason why I've been with Veritas a long time is every day I get to help make somebody's life easier uh, from an IT standpoint. That's great. So, Cliff, how can people connect with you to learn more about Veritas and beefing up their resiliency for their cloud environment? Sure. So, um, well, we're going to be AWS, and we are every year. We're always a big sponsor. Uh, so we had a nice booth. Well, I think we had like 40 or 50 product managers there. So we have a lot of experts that are going to be there uh, for AWS 2022 at reInvent in Vegas. Um, I'll be there. Um, I always enjoy, I, again, having customers come over and talk. Um, www.veritas.com, of course. Uh, one thing I've always liked about Veritas is 
we don't hide our you know our stuff you know our papers and all of our and our documentation you know and our how to and our tech notes behind a paywall like it's just there like, in fact i sometimes i just google and the google he gets a veritas site to find the answer to something so you know our site is just full of documentation and how to's and tech articles uh you know details on how to do something uh, again one reason why i i kind of stay with veritas it's a it's as a tech person i appreciate being able to get to uh, an answer quickly and then of course you know on twitter it's at rag hauler if you want to know why my handle is at rag hauler you have to find me at a bar in vegas and we can talk about it but um I, i'm due out there and of course i'm active on linkedin as are many of our product managers and we have a sales force in almost every major metro in the world so if you do don't know anybody and you hit our website some person with a local area exchange like you have on your phone is going to call you up and, and say hello. Awesome. And I'll put links to all those contact uh, oh, great. information. In they the always show. say links down here in the description, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, uh, you know, if I make it out there to AWS, I'll look you up and uh, sit down with you in the bar and I hope so. Out your Twitter handle. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As, as, a, as a technologist, you know, I love telling stories. And um, I think it's what a, a good technologist is all about is telling stories, hopefully fun stories, uh, and interesting stories. So even my personal ones, I try to make them fun. <laughs> Great. Uh, Cliff, do you have any parting words of wisdom that you'd like to share with the audience? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's a loaded question there, uh, sir. But uh, Abraham, I'll tell you, um, this has come up uh, in customer conversations and uh, every time I'm at a, at a trade show, and it is around ransomware. And probably the thing that we're seeing, the big shift is people are realizing, oh, well, you, yeah, you're, you're doing the data protection thing, so they have to do something else. They're hitting people's configuration, like the metadata, like you know, your firewall configurations, your AD configuration, your VPC configurations. You think about all those things that you have out there, you know, your VMware cluster configuration. So not the not the cluster itself, not the AD server itself, right? Not maybe objects within the VPC, but the configurations. Because if those get, you know, somehow corrupted or stolen or deleted, it's really, really tough. Even if you did the best job in the world from a data protection standpoint, right? You need that first rung on the ladder to climb out of the hole of a ransomware attack. So you know, use a floppy drive. Some people will think, remember what they are, but a thumb drive, but do that thing with a small piece of, uh, you know, a technology that, to record all that metadata. It's probably a handful of megabytes. It's so easy metadata. to back up. It's, it's just a right. text file usually. But, but go ahead and get that saved because that is what they're going after. So, so hopefully that'll save somebody weeks worth of their time. Great, Cliff, thank you so much for sharing your time and your wisdom. I really enjoyed having you on the show. Always look forward to next time. And again, uh, everybody, see you at AWS. Uh, I, I dress in red because um, I like it and also it's fun. Uh, so you'll see me uh, walking around Vegas. Uh, stop by and say hello.